So I'll introduce. You, I'll, you got it. You got it. I'll, I'll get us started. Um, hi, I'm Timothy hi. Naftali. I'm director of the Richard Nixon Presidential Library and Museum. We're in Yorba Linda, California. It's October 25th, 2007, and I have the honor and privilege to be interviewing Hubert Perry. Hubert, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. When did you first meet Richard Nixon? Probably when I was a junior in high school, I guess. That's the first I have any recollection of, of seeing him. And that was in 1929. Tell us about your high school. Not, not very, nothing very much to talk about. But I was just a uh, mediocre student, average student, at least. And uh, he, was a, he was a year ahead of me. And he was a junior. He, uh, he went to Whittier his junior and senior year in high school. He came from Fullerton. And uh, he was very well known as a speaker. He, he got into speaking and, uh, and uh, ran for student body president, came within a few votes of getting it, but he didn't, didn't get it because he, he wasn't too well known at that time. But he uh, was uh, a great debater. Debating was a thing in high school. The American Constitution, or I think, was the thing that they were talking about. And he was he was a number two man, in, in, in number two man in his class, graduating from high school. Uh, do you remember that that campaign, I, his first campaign? N not really. He was up against a, uh, a fellow who was in sports and who was uh, very popular. And Dick was didn't have much time to give to 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 extracurricular activities, so he he, he wasn't too well known. Do you, do you remember? I know it's a long time ago, but do you remember the the issues? What, what were they? What were no. they campaigning about? Who, who was the most popular? It, it, it was it was not very. Did uh, Did Richard Nixon go out for any of the sports teams in high school? No, he didn't go out for any any sports. He, he didn't he didn't have much time. To, do anything except just be in the uh, uh, be a good student. Tell us a little bit, please, about uh, uh, 1929 Whittier. Where did the Perrys live, and where did the Nixons live? Well, we, we lived in the old part of town, up on Friends Avenue, uh, <clears throat> and they lived. It just it, it could have been 50 miles away from Whittier because they lived in East Whittier, and uh, if you lived in East Whittier, you didn't come into Whittier. You didn't didn't much. They went to the little church, Quaker Church, in East Whittier, near the store, across the street from the store, and uh, that was about five mi four or five miles. But it sounds, as you said, as if it were. And a different planet. Well, it, it was because Whittier was a, a tight little community. It went out as far as College Avenue, and East Whittier was just country. Did you go to visit him when he was at that time? No. Um, not, not in high school. Not in high school. Uh, were you in any clubs together? No. So you just remember seeing him. You weren't really friends. Yeah, we, we, we weren't. He, he didn't have much time to socialize with anybody. Like, and we were, we were, those of 
us from the city were, they, they could have been on a different planet almost. Um, tell us some of the great high school teachers that he might have had. I don't, <clears throat> I don't think anybody in high school uh, that was particularly great. Uh, certainly there was nobody that I remember. Uh, I, don't really, I don't remember who handled, who taught history, but cer certainly uh, he, he didn't develop an interest in political scene until he got to Whittier College and got into the Paul Smith's influence, who was the history professor at Whittier College. And Paul Smith, I think, stirred an interest in him, stirred up, uh, got him interested in history and uh, interested in American, American history and in uh, uh, politics, perhaps. Can you tell us a little bit more about Paul Smith? What do you remember of him? Well, Paul Smith was a great uh, history professor, a poor college president, but uh, one of the worst what he had ever had, but uh, certainly uh, he, he was an influence because of his enthusiasm and his interest in history on Dick Nixon and uh, Dick Nixon's interest in politics, I think, because of, and and uh, po politics and uh, and and political figures that that uh, he, he would he would spend a lot of time talking about so that. Uh, Dick, I think, because of his taking the, so much history, uh, uh, got interested in, his, in, in, in the subject from Paul Smith, who was quite contagious in his speaking ability or his interest in, in, in characters. Do you remember um, Richard Nixon actually telling you this about Paul Smith? No, no. Because I never, I never had any classes in American history with Dick. Uh, I was taking business courses, which were, were they didn't have very much, but they didn't, but I didn't take any American history. Didn't take uh, the sort of subjects that Dick taught, took. How did you become friends with him at Whittier? Well, I guess the football team. We both both spent a lot of time on the bench. He he never got a letter, and I I got a letter my senior year as manager of the team, so I got one letter and uh, he got ne no letters. But every night he would come out for the team, and uh, the coach was. Uh, was a big influence on Dick. Uh, Chief Newman, uh, and uh, although Dick was underweight and not able to uh, carry on his duties as as a lineman, he was nevertheless very enthusiastic, and, and his greatest. Uh, contribution to the team was was in between. When somebody would come out of the game, he, <clears throat> he'd go over and sit by him and, and talk to him and and uh, pep him up. And uh, but but he never got into a game. I don't, don't think he ever. Very seldom, at least, never got into a game. And he never 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 was. Uh, serious enough 
player uh, to uh, to ever get a letter. He didn't play football in high school. No. So he he, he tries out for the football team in college. He, he goes out. For, I don't know whether he was on freshman team or not because that was the year before I was in college. But he he was on the varsity team. It's my second year, and. Uh, At 155 pounds, he he didn't have much of a chance against fellows like Clint Harris, who was played opposite him on the line, and Clint weighed 220 pounds, something like that. I'm surprised that Chief Newman put him on the team. Well, he he had two or three small fellows, um, and. Oh, I don't think I don't think uh, Newman had a choice. He, he he had to take anything he could get at Whittier College because he didn't he didn't have any professionals on the team. He didn't have anybody who was really that big, and uh, so uh, he he had he had he let him take let him practice and. And he uh, tried to encourage him to uh, to be better, but he was uh, he just didn't have the speed or the uh, weight to do it, do the job. Can you tell us a little bit about Chief Newman, please? Chief Newman was a driver, and he uh, he he only he knew one thing. That you, that you got to you got to drive. If you're on the line, you got to you got to you got to get to the other guy before he he gets out. He moves, and uh, Newman was not a good loser, which may be uh, uh, particularly against outfits like Laverne. Uh, he, um, but I think I think he, he he inspired Nixon to uh, who, who was never an athlete to to be be aggressive and to be. Uh, uh, a good sport. He he, he never uh, didn't quit. He could have quit, but he, he 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 knowing that he wasn't going to make it, he uh, nevertheless came out every night for practice, and he practiced. He gave it everything he could, and he, but he he was. Probably the most inspirational guy, or inspirational player in the team, because he he, he was always giving the uh, fellows who were pulled out of the game uh, or got hurt. Or, or, he was always giving them a pep talk that they got to do. He was in, always encouraging them, and he was. Uh, he was really kind of the spark plug of the team, and uh, he, he, in some ways, was the most popular fellow on the team because uh, he, uh, he he was always encouraging everybody to, to do a good job. Why was the coach called Chief? He was he was Indian, part Indian, and. Uh, and I think he he was he was he came to Whittier from Covina. He was chief over there, and uh, I don't think he was. A, I don't think he had. And he he was probably only uh, fifty percent Indian, I guess. He'd gone to USC and. Uh, had been 
very aggressive as, as a coach. He did a great job for Whittier. Uh, in, in the interview that you did with, uh, for, for the Whittier Old History, you, 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 you said that Chief Newman was not the most popular. Uh, he, was a, he was very well, hard. He, well, he, he, he was, he, he never gave anybody any credit for, for uh, trying hard. Uh, and he was always driving them. Which is, I guess, another way of bringing out the better. If f football is a, if if it's a contact sport, and it is, uh, I I don't think I ever heard him ever uh, congratulate anybody. But he, uh, he he got the most out of his players, if any coach I ever seen. He uh, was, even though sometimes they they were even they were fighting him, but uh, but but Richard Nixon liked him, right? I think Dick liked him, and uh, he liked Dick, and uh, uh, he he, ne he never picked on Dick because I don't think he ever anticipated too much of a football player out of Dick. But he, uh, but he, Dick was was still the. If you'd asked anybody on the team, who who the, who they, they their favorite was, uh, they'd probably said Dick Nixon because he was. He always had a good word to say to everybody when they when they come off the field. Uh, uh, to your knowledge, did uh, that Richard Nixon and, and Chief Newman stay in touch afterwards? Yeah, I think I think I think they did. I'm not sure that the chief was a Republican or a Democrat, uh, but I, I I think he all he always. We we had a um, a meeting in Berea or Yorbaland or someplace three or four years before the library was started, and uh, the t whole team came out and they gave Dick a, uh, a letter that day. And uh, the, the, the fellows all came out because Dick Nixon. This is in the 1980s? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, tell us uh, a bit about, he, he runs for student body president and wins. Mm -hmm. What do you remember of that campaign, if anything? Well, he, he was, the only thing I remember in the campaign is he, he nominated me for uh, treasurer. A and his speech was the shortest speech in history. O Honest Hubert Perry. That was all he said. And that was it. And so I had no competition. So that... Uh, very, 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 uh, very inexpensive campaign and uh, very uh, unpolitical campaign too. It, uh, but for for a fellow who didn't have much time, uh, unlike the rest of us who. We're, a lot of us from from Whittier, so we would we would spend a good deal of time on the campus talking and just killing time, I guess. Dick didn't have any time to spare. He 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 got up early and went to uh, 
into the LA and to get vegetables or meats or whatever he was buying for the store and they get back to the campus. And so he had very little time to kill to or to waste in trivia, uh, small talk and that sort of thing. So he didn't, uh, he, he, he didn't, he didn't, politicize himself very much, but he but when it came time to to select the president of the student body, he uh, everybody recognized his ability. He was so much smarter than the rest of us. When you're ready, Hubert, you went to Whittier during the depression. Uh, how did that affect your your college years? I mean, how hard was Whittier hit by the depression? Well, it depends whether you were in the if you were in the citrus business or in the farming business. Uh, that that was pretty um, slow going during the '30s. But Whittier had 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 the there were a lot of people in Whittier that were, had money. Uh, and uh, because of Santa Fe Springs, uh, J. Paul Getty, in his autobiography, says that he, my dad gave him his start in the, the deal he made for some oil property in the middle of Santa Fe Springs. and. Uh, the other people who own land in Santa Fe Springs uh, all became rich. The, there were people in town who were blacksmiths who became uh, manufacturers of oil well products. So that uh, we had, during the 30s, some people with lots of money. And then we had, we had people in the banking business who had no money. They were just, just salaried people, like my dad. Uh, so Whittier was a, was a, being a small college town too, it attracted people that were um, above average in, in ability and um, like the Murphys who owned the Murphy Ranch, which now has become Friendly Hills, high, upper scale subdivision. Uh, they and Standard Oil had, were, were partners in this development. And uh, so Whittier had, was quite influenced by Santa Fe Springs and the money that was that came out of that that area. And previous to that, Whittier Hills had been were all oil wells at one time. So you had a, a real disparity between rich and poor in Whittier. Yeah. I didn't, nobody thought of themselves as being poor. We didn't, we, unlike today, it, it's 50% Mexican Americans, but in that time there were no Mexicans. There were no blacks in what here, it was just a, a, a middle class white school. The Nixons, though, didn't. We're not doing that well financially. No. Um, did you visit uh, the store at that time? Well, we we we'd stop in there once in a while, but it was way out in the country. 
three miles east of Whittier, and and people, everybody came to Whittier to shop. And that was all that was all country. That was not part of the city of Whittier. So uh, they had their own. Kids that went to Whittier from East Whittier would come in by bus and then uh, leave by bus. You, you wouldn't see them again. They, they, so they, they were they were. If you were lived in East Whittier, you probably didn't uh, do anything in Whittier. Could you tell that they were from East Whittier by the clothes they wore? No. I don't, I don't I don't think so. But they were but they were considered country. Well, no, they were considered a lot of fellows came in who lived on ranches out in East Whittier would come into school, but uh, they were uh, you didn't know whether they had money or didn't have money. Um, tell us about uh, the societies at Whittier. You're a member of, of Franklin. Mm -hmm. Tell us about it. What was it? Well, when I went to Whittier, when I first went to Whittier College, the um, they had only one one club. They didn't know no fraternities. Uh, they didn't have a house or anything like that, but uh, the uh, Franklins were the one club that were in business, and then Dick Nixon came along and uh, he got most of the fellows on the football team who had been passed over by the Franklins for one reason or other. And he started his own group called the Orthogonians. And so he, I don't know whether he was ever president of the Orthogonian Club or not. I don't think he was. But he was the instigator of the club. He was the spark plug of the club. And uh, he, he got, them, got them going. And they, they thought they were very smart because they uh, we 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 were all we all had tuxes because we were in the gay club. We all had tuxes, so we we'd have our pictures taken in our tuxes. So they had their pictures taken in in white shirts and uh, no ties, and that was that was the uh, thing that the. That they thought that was pretty smart. For but the clubs, they, they were just social clubs, right? Social clubs. They, 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 they meet once once a month, something like that. For dinner or drinks? Or? No drinks, no drinks. No drink. Was this a dry? It was, it, was, it was dry. I didn't have a drink till I went in the service. So you went for dinner? We'd have dinners. We'd have uh, usually a cheap dinner, spaghetti or something like that. Now, now, why would the people have been passed over? What, what, what did you need to be a Frank member of the Franklins? What, what did well, you need? There were a lot of good fellows that were uh, just not included. It, I suppose it was. I don't. I don't know. I don't remember who. Well, somebody. Somebody had to sponsor me, and I don't know. I suppose the city guys uh, were. Uh, we got people that we knew from, from Whittier, and uh, they. Uh, there were a lot of good fellows who were not for football that came from other places, Fullerton or. Los Angeles, and uh, great guys, but uh, they they were they they just there were there wasn't there wasn't room in the club for any more people. 
when uh, when but but the Cubs weren't were not that important. It was much more important to be involved in the Geek Cub or in football team than uh, than on a in a, in a club. Uh, Richard Nixon also did some acting, right? Yes. Did you see him in a play? Yeah. I don't. I don't remember too much of plays that he was in, but. Uh, The, the drama Whittier College was I was going to say not that important but it it was uh, they had the they had the uh, they had the uh, third floor of the of the old quick of the old Old building, that the old brick building that we we, we occupied, and uh, they put on plays, and Dick was in two or three plays that I I can remember, but but I don't remember any. I don't remember specifics of any of them. Did uh, did he help at all with the Acropolis with the yearbook? No. Um. Um, tell us a bit about um, uh, classes at Whittier. Were they large? Were they small? I mean, were there lecture classes? Well, everything was pretty small. Uh, the, the, there were only 400 students in the school, so your classes were 15, 20, 25 would be a big class. And uh, the uh, I went to school. It cost me thousand dollars for four years. Wow. Two hundred and fifty dollars a year. Well, but. In, in the 30s, that was a lot of money. That was a lot of money. So that would have been a lot of money for Richard Nixon's family. Yeah. Well, he may have had a he may have had scholarship. I don't know. Did he ever talk to you about how he almost went to Harvard? Well, that was that was that was for law. That was for law. That was after that was after graduation. No, because I was at Stanford then, and um, I guess he just didn't figure that he could ever make it financially. Um, tell us about, um, uh, you were on campus in 1932. A big election in this country. Do you remember anything about the, you know, the, the Roosevelt against Hoover? No. You, well, Whittier was a very much of a Republican town in those days. Um, you met Her, uh, Herbert Hoover, though. Didn't yeah. You? Uh, and he talked to you about Richard Nixon, didn't he? Do you remember that? Years later, of course. Yeah, I, I don't remember what he said. But he, he was imp he was impressed with with Richard Nixon because my, my my dad was very much impressed with with uh, his ability as as. He figured his character and everything else. He, uh, he, he, I guess he figured he was going to go someplace. So, so he 
My dad was one of the great boosters of, of Dick Nixon. Of course, his, his parents had to come into Whittier to do their banking. So he was their banker. Oh. So is that, is that how Richard Nixon met your, your parents? Or you met your father was through the banking that I, Frank I, and Hannah did? It probably was. It may have been through East, East Whittier Method, Friends Church, because my, my grandfather was a preacher out there one time. Oh, because you didn't go to the same church. You went to the Quaker church I, in the city. It's in Whittier. Tell us what you remember, I mean, of the famous story of the Committee of 100 and the letter to Richard Nixon. Um, did you encourage your dad to, to, to think of Nixon as a candidate? No, I, no. He, he had been in, had his offices in the Bank of America building where my dad was on the first floor and, and uh, Tom Bewley, who was Dick's partner, was partner was on the fourth or fifth floor. And my dad had, had seen Dick a lot of times when we'd come, they'd come to our house for connection with the uh, the, the, the uh, Greek club and uh, he, he was impressed with Dick. He was not only impressed with his of how smart he was but he was He'd been on the board when uh, Dick had appeared before them to sell the idea of having dances at college affairs. That was a, that was a big uh, plus as far as uh, Dick was concerned uh, because uh, Whittier had, there was no dancing. Whittier College, no socializing, not much socializing anyway, and uh, he was able to convince the board that they should allow dancing, at, at, not on the campus because they had no no facilities for that, no, no place for it, but uh, at the Whittier Women's Club, and that uh, was kind of the maybe it maybe it made my dad think that uh, Dick had some political ability because he was able to sell the these old Quakers on on the fact that they should allow dancing anyway they they did they, they had dancing and uh, so my senior year uh, junior senior year um, we got the benefit of Dick's taking on the board. What, was that part of his his sort of uh, campaign promise that he had promised to do that or where did this come from because Nixon Richard Nixon wasn't a dancer no he wasn't he wasn't a dancer but I guess enough of his friends were dancers that they they probably uh, convinced him that it should be done I, I don't know whether this was this came out of the the efforts of the uh, Orthogonians, or just where it came from, but it probably probably came from the Orthogonians. So your dad was persuaded by Nixon to support dancing. Well, my dad was on the board then. Yeah. Um, so he voted for dancing. Um, uh, tell us about Mr. Bewley. What was he like? Well, he was from an old Quaker family, and uh, he was, um, 
his offices are still in bit he's still in business now uh, he, he's not he's no longer in but uh, Tom Bewley was from an old Quaker family and uh, but he divorced his wife and married a young woman and that uh, kind of got people like my dad unhappy with him because he, he uh, people just didn't do that in those days. Whittier. It, just, it was just a little town where everybody knew everybody else and uh, they uh, you, you just didn't get fooled around like that. But he was a good lawyer and uh, Dick could have stayed there in Whittier and had a good law practice. But did you see when you knew him as a as a as a college student? Did you see an ambition to go elsewhere and do more than stay in Whittier, in Nixon? Well, yeah, he, we used to sit at the bus uh, on the going different engagements we had around Southern California and uh, Dick would, we'd sit and Dick would would ask you questions and I remember one thing he, he, he said is you, you never you never try to be a um, city councilman in your own town. Because he said that uh, he says if you, 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 you got to go for something better, bigger than that because you get involved in all this minutia and you just you just don't you don't think big enough. And he was right. The city council was is a killer of all of all the minutia that they get, they 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 talk about and they do, and the conniving that goes on, and I I think that uh, not that there isn't not not that the uh, some of the senators and congressmen don't uh, don't allow themselves to get involved and they sure do but. Uh, you, they do it on a bigger scale than certainly a local. Tell us a little bit about your father. He's an important player in the story of Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon was very grateful to him. I've seen some letters that he wrote to your dad thanking him for being an early booster. How, how politically active was your dad? My dad was a frustrated congressman. He wanted to run for Congress one time, I remember. And my mother wouldn't, wouldn't, when everybody was Republican in Whittier area, and that was years ago, and uh, my mother did, didn't want any part of it. And so my dad was, I, I think he saw in Dick Nixon uh, his own dreams of that he couldn't make happen. So he, he was content to be a small town banker. And uh, and not, not go for political. But he, but he always wanted to go to law school. He didn't have the benefit of a college education, but he worked in the bank all his life time he was 20 so but he but he he 
he wanted to be a, a lawyer so badly that I went to, back to law school when, after, I, after the service, after I was in the Navy, and, and for no one for the Navy for three years to, to Loyola night, night School, just to please my dad, I guess, because I thought he'd be interested in my being a lawyer, but I'm kind of glad I didn't do it now. Um, what did you study at Stanford? Finance. Finance. Um, when did you first meet Thelma Pat Ryan? Well, she was a teacher at Whittier High School. And uh, I don't think I ever met her, met her before before she started going with Dick. I never, I never knew her at the high school, although some of the people in Whittier were teachers with her uh, and knew her. But I, 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 don't, I don't think I ever knew her until she became, she was married to Dick and was in Congress. Did you go to their wedding? No. I don't think so. Um, did you double date with them? Did you go? Did you? What were they like as a couple in this early period? Did you interact with them at all? Well, the only we we went went east, went east to, to Washington once and uh, saw them. But they were on, they were on a different planet. They were in politics, and I had no interest in politics. Did so, you? So I I just I didn't when he when he I, I had no interest in his campaign that when he ran for Congress. My dad was very interested. And they just lived day by day his arguments or debates with his fellow that was the incumbent there. Voorhees. Voorhees. And, and um, the only time I got interested in politics was uh, when Dick came back after um, after being in the the uh, I forget the, the guy's name who was, who was the, uh, he was a Harvard man, and he was... Alger Hiss? Alger Hiss. And he, he gave us a talk for an hour and a half out at one of the homes out in the east, in, around the point of the hill in Whittier. And uh, no, no notes, no nothing. And uh, you couldn't help but be impressed with the, the, de the details that Dick had on this fellow. And uh, we were all convinced from Whittier that this fellow was guilty. And I, I kind of think that uh, that's one of the things that turned the... Uh, The Harvard graduates against him because he, he uh, took after one of their favorite professors. Um, did you go with the group from Whittier to the White House when President Nixon had a reunion there? Or? No, that was that was his class. It was just his class. Just his class. Did you visit him in the White House? Um, yes, I was. Uh, on a uh, 
member of a of a hospital group, and we had we had held meetings in Washington D.C. So I, I had chance to get several church services and and. Uh, some of the activities that he had in, in the White House through that. But I, uh, Did you see the family quarters in the White House? No. Um, would you say you'd stay, stayed in touch with uh, Richard Nixon after, um, well, after he went to Washington? Well, we decided that we, were, we wanted to have the Nixon Library in Whittier. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I worked very hard on that thing. And uh, then Whittier College turned its back on him. And when, uh, and when the city of Whittier said that we'll give, we'll give some 30 acres of land up in the hills. Whittier College, uh, the board, the management, the whole college turned its back on him and said, we, 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 don't, we don't want the library in Whittier, which was a dumb, dumb thing to do. But in the meantime, I had, I had, kept in contact with him as a matter of fact he, he called me up he called me up said I want to I want to bring our attorney out on weekend next weekend and and, and uh, I want to talk to you about the library in Whittier and uh, he, he didn't call, he, he, Rosemary called, and, and uh, he, he was in the background, I could hear him talking. And uh, I, had to, I had to turn him down because Whittier College uh, said no. And it was a t terrible, terrible thing to do. It was it was it was just dumb for Whittier College because they, they turned their back on on a library which would be his, in business for ever, you know. When it we, became, we hope so. Yeah, you know, with the government involved, it, uh, it's it's it's. Uh, this is while uh, Richard Nixon was still president. Yeah. Was this was the had the Watergate scandal started by then? I don't, I don't remember whether it was that or not. Well, were there anti-war demonstrations on the campus of Whittier at that time? No, I don't think so. I, I, it, was, it was just... It was the board and the president at that time who, who couldn't see the opportunity that this, this gave to the institution. Had Whittier become a Democrat? Uh, I mean, I'm just. This is during the the, the, the presidency. Of Richard Nixon has not resigned yet, um, and they said no. Well, I, I, I can't I can't remember whether 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 he had resigned at that time or not. Um, the, you were part of the Nixon Foundation yeah. in, in that period. Um, as you are now. Um, tell us, why did the Nixon Foundation wind itself up, the first one, in 1974? Why did you close it down? How did you decide to close it down? Well, the original, the original group, I don't know. They had some pretty good people on it. Ross Perot and a 
lot of money. And, uh, and the president of I can't remember the... the uh, it also didn't have Aplanap and Bibi Rebozo, the first one? No, I don't think... I don't think it did. I don't remember it. Did, I, it, did you ever meet them? No. Um, one, one other question. Uh, your father passed away just after Richard Nixon became vice president. You, I think your dad died in 54. Mm -hmm. I was reading about how uh, your dad was planning to go to the inauguration and your mom died, um, which is a terrible blow of his legacy to your family. And do you remember your dad talking to you about, because he was alive to see Richard Nixon become vice president, how he felt about the fact that the man that he promoted became vice president? Well, he, he, we did get a chance to take him back to Washington once. Um, when, when Dick was vice president, Dick, and, uh, but he never got to see him president. No, no, he didn't. How was the trip to Washington? Do you remember any of it? Well, we, you know, uh, Dick was very thoughtful and, uh, he arranged for my my dad to uh, go up to New York and see um, Herbert Hoover, and, and, and in his apartment at Waldorf Towers, uh, and um, that was a surprise to my dad because he didn't know anything about. It. I had arranged that for him, and uh, it. Uh, Dick was very nice to, while he was vice president to take us out to, to, uh, to dinner a couple of times in Washington before we went up to New York. And uh, he, he really um, went out of his way for my dad to to uh, show my dad how much he appreciated being involved with. Was your dad, why did he choose a, a meeting with Herbert Hoover? Was it your, your dad was a great fan of Herbert Hoover's? Well, uh, he, he was a fan of Herbert Hoover's, and Mrs. Hoover had been a um, board member at Whittier College board, and, and so uh, he um, he won. He never met Mr. Hoover, so he wanted to meet him. And you were Stanford. Well, that was true. That too. Um, uh, Tell me, uh, did, when your dad sent the letter to Richard Nixon to invite him to compete, did your dad already know that Richard Nixon was the fellow he wanted to run against Voorhees? Mm -hmm. he, he, he'd, he'd selected him, and he asked him, I guess, in the letter, um, if he were Republican. He knew. He knew what. He, he, he knew. He knew. He, he knew what the answer was. But but he. Uh, but he 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 was so convinced that Dick Nixon was the proper fellow to beat Jerry Voorhees that it was a kind of a one man band and selling that idea to the to the. People over in Pasadena, and th th there was a uh, a 
a man in San Francisco that that I think it was a vice president of Standard Oil who furnished the money to, to bring Dick out here to, to uh, appear before them. Did your dad arrange that? Yeah. Is that, is that the man who, because uh, Rich Nixon had no money. How no. did he pay for that campaign? Well. Uh, this this man, uh, Whittier and Standard Oil were very much tied in together. Uh, Murphy Ranch was a partner of Standard Oil. Standard Oil had its, one of its headquarters in Whittier, early headquarters, going back to 19... Five or something like that, and so they, 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 they'd always been a very good relationship. And my dad knew these people, and they knew him, and so he got his kicks out of. He couldn't do things himself because he worked for a big bank, but he well, he, he could get money from Standard and. And he, on a personal basis, and if, if he said that uh, Dick Nixon were, was a good man, why they, 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 there was no problem of getting the money from them to support him. Do you remember the name of the guy from San Francisco? No, I think if I heard it, I, I'd remember it. Um, last two questions. How important for people who want to understand Richard Nixon was his Quakerism, the fact that he was a Quaker? Well, I, I think it, it, it is the Quakers don't believe in war. And Dick went in the Navy, and I went in the Navy, both of us, against the not the wishes of our parents, but against the, the feeling of the people in the church. And so he, I think he had a strong, always had a strong conviction that, or, or a strong uh, peace motivation behind him. And I think all the things he did in when he was president in the Vietnam War were, uh, were, were indicative of his attempting to find solution in a peaceful way. Dick was raised We didn't, we didn't have any liquor at Whittier College. And I think maybe some people maybe had some beer once in a while, but it was a pretty dry institution. And, and I think his, Dick's feeling of liquor and And everything. He he didn't he didn't learn about liquor till he went in the service. I'm sure he didn't have sure he didn't have a drink when he went to Whittier College. I didn't either. I generally went, went in the Navy and got. So you're saying that the trouble he had may have been because he didn't drink. In no, I'm I'm saying that. He, he had a very high standard of, of what was right and what was wrong from his education and his Quaker background. 
and I find it kind of hard to reconcile that with, with Watergate. Did you ever talk to him about it? Watergate? No. Have you ever listened to the tapes? No. So how, how do you, how, how have you tried to reconcile it? Well, I, I haven't, I haven't attempted to reconcile it. Uh, there's a, I, I think there's more, there are more players than Dick Nixon in the, in the, in the Watergate. And I think uh, John Dean is more than a bit player. According, at least he is according to uh, the, the biography that uh, the, the English Aiken. Aiken, John Aiken wrote. Um. As we finish up, is there an anecdote about Richard Nixon you'd like to preserve? A story that you remember about him that we haven't touched on? Well, I, I'd like to see the... I'd like to see the Watergate thing not be so politicized because I'm sure that it, it's... It's no worse than what's been done by other presidents, but but they were out to get him, and I think the uh, they were out to get him from the the get go from from the fact that he wasn't a Ivy League graduate, and, and he picked on. Alger Hiss, who was an Ivy League graduate, and I think from that point on, they 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 they, they were they were they were really out to get him. Was this the sense that you your friends had and your fellow Whittier graduates that when they looked at what happened to Richard Nixon, is that how they explained it to themselves? No, I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what they. I don't know how they. I don't know. I don't know if they know enough about. The whole history of the thing to uh, to uh, feel. I, I'm not even sure that the story's been told. But uh, I, I just I think between John Dean and Dick's trying to protect. Uh, uh, his attorney general. There's something missing in the thing. When was the last time you saw Richard Nixon? Well, we had we had a couple meetings down at the Western White House down at San Clemente of the uh, library committee. I guess that's probably the last time I've se seen him. So you, you, you didn't see him when, when he went to New, New Jersey, when he was out in New Jersey or after that? New Jersey? When he moved out to New Jersey in the latter part of his life. No. Um, was there an attempt to bring the library to Whittier at the end again before it went to Yorba Linda or was the Whittier idea gone after the end of the White House years? Well, when, when Whittier turned his back on, Whittier College turned his back on him, we, we gave up. Because 
was too embarrassed to. Uh, the city had given, it had done its part, and Whittier College hadn't done anything. And who was the president of Whittier College at that time? I don't know. Mm. I'm not sure who was. Hubert, thank you for your time. All right. I enjoyed it. I'm, I'm sorry. I perhaps. I haven't been. It's been very helpful. And, you know, I asked you about things that happened in the late 20s and 1930s. So, over 70 years ago. Well over 70 years ago. Well, it's a few years ago. Years from me. So. You're allowed to forget. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you very much.